everybody, the Nintendo Switch is the worst freaking thing that I've ever seen at all. Oh, my God. Wait. Oh. I'm not every other YouTube channel. I'm Sir Tap Tap. Hi there. We're going to calmly talk about the Nintendo Switch. So, we learned quite a lot today, or I guess very, very late yesterday. I watched it this morning. Um, I gotta say, I wasn't a big fan of the actual presentation itself. Kind of drug out. Um, not really the same spirit. I kind of I kind of see why their E3 shows are pretty heavily edited. Um, the translator guy was definitely not... Uh, they've, they they usually do a better job with the translation. I guess this one is because it was live. But uh, he wasn't even really making an effort to try to match the emotive intent of what he was, you know, repeating. Uh, not a huge deal, but, you know, I, I couldn't watch the whole thing. I just got re recaps, honestly. Um, biggest thing for me, Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, I do not like that um, the, the city, the station square, basically. I mean... It's obviously a station square level, but uh, Mario with real people, uh, it's a little weird. Um, but in general, I really love the look of that, like, crystalline one, and um, overall, it looked really great. Uh, it sounds like it's a more open world one. Um, there's no more Boz. There's no more new Super Mario Boz. There's no more Kooplings. Um, there's no more new Super Mario Bros. art style. It's... I mean, I love the Super Mario 3D World. You know, there, there, there's been good Marios. I just, I really never want to see a new, another new Super Mario Bros. game, frankly. Um, it's, it's weird because back on NES and SNES, every single new Mario game had like a totally new art style. And Kirby games, too. And so it's been kind of a shame to see them just, you know, be the same old thing. It's not necessarily bad. It's just, oh... Again, especially with the new Super Mario Bros. I was okay with 3D Land and World. Those are both great games. But uh, Odyssey, I mean, I guess we didn't see too much gameplay-wise. Like, is it, like, star collecting? Like, I guess it's more galaxy-ish is what I'm guessing. I don't know if there's hub worlds, but uh, that's probably the title I'm most interested in. Um, along with Zelda. Zelda is their big hitter on launch. Um... Isn't it kind of cheating to delay a game, like, around a freaking year to make it launch? Ah, oh, whatever. Um, I was kind of initially worried that Breath of the Wild wouldn't look as good on Switch, because, I mean, <laughs> it's basically a portable system. But, um, based on how Mario Odyssey looked, I would say, assuming that's all accurate footage, and I don't think Nintendo usually, you know, does the bullshot treatment... Um, that looks like pretty much, that looks like pretty high-end Wii U sort of stuff, so I would guess they're about on par with each other, maybe? I, I would like a proper comparison of the two, because I do have a Wii U, so I'm not 100% sure. Do I want Breath of the Wild on Wii U? Do I want it on Switch? Um, I'm not really sure I want a Switch on launch yet. That's, that's a complicated thing. So let's talk about pricing. Well, actually, first things first, for the launch... Um, so Zelda, we, Zelda's a known-ish quantity. Um, Zelda's great, but, uh, you know, it's one game. So they also announced, um, Bomberman, which I'm really excited about. There's one screenshot that I was, there's a thing where, like, they died, and I think they were playing single player, and there's like, do you want to continue, and it'll cost X amount of gems, and it's a Konami game, because they bought Hudson and then did, like, nothing with it. Freaking Konami. Anyway. Um, yeah, it, it's a little concerning, but I, I don't know. As long as it's, like, just a pay to continue in your, you know, it's 100% in-game currency, no, you know, microtransactions. Because from what I've heard, I think it's a $60 game, which I don't know about that. Um, I love Barman, and it sounds like it has a single-player mode. So, and I mean, it's going to be, you know, one of very few titles at launch. I think it's, like, three, four titles at launch. There's a little graphic that has, uh... The approximate dates. It's going to be a fairly lean year, it looks like. Um, and I also heard that um, non-VIP developers do not have dev kits and will not have them before April. So indie game ports are probably not going to happen until the very end of this year. Um, and that's only like the very simple ones. So don't expect a ton indie-wise. So launch. Well, it looks like a launch. It's not exactly impressive. Um... I'm hopeful for Bomberman. I really love the art in Bomberman. The uh, the 2D art they had was really great. 
Um, Mew. Yes, hello. Um, that's Parker. So, um, you made me lose my thought. Calm yourself. Um, so yeah, Bomberman looks great other than that. Well, the, the 3D, the in-game graphics, I really wish they did a better job of translating the 2D, like, you know, the real Bomberman look to the in-game. Um, there's a Dreamcast, I think it was called Bomberman Online. Um, it's like this really early shell shading look, and it looks pretty close to what you think, you know, you think of when you think Bomberman, at least, you know, if you know, if you know Bomberman. Um... And uh, it sounds like there's like eight player local. I think there's online multiplayer. Um, online multiplayer is a concern. So we did learn that the Switch will have paid online service. Um, we don't know what's going to cost. And we don't know what kind of freebies we get. Other than you get one free, basically a rental of an NES or SNES game that will have online play. And why I say rental is apparently this was confirmed to... Uh, a writer for, uh, for, I forget what publication was that, but it was, it was a journalist, and uh, Nintendo confirmed that you get the game starting of, like, the first day of the month, and then at the end of the, d the month, you don't get it, you have to buy that game. You don't, you don't keep it. It's not like PlayStation Plus or um, Xbox Live. Like, it's not even, like, as long as you keep your subscription, no, it's, it's gone at the end of the month. Which, in a way, like, that means everybody's gonna be playing the same game, but... That's also true if everyone just happens to get a new game. So um, I saw somebody saying that could be a really smart move. I don't. I don't really agree on that. Um, that just seems. That just seems. Uh, uh, I don't know. Conservative, fussy. I don't know. Um, I'm really hoping the Nintendo's online is going to be really cheap compared to the other two, because I mean it's Nintendo. Their online stuff is pretty bad. Imagine if you have Pokemon Sun Moon. Imagine paying to use Festival Plaza. Imagine that. Oh my god, no. Uh, Festival Plaza, if you don't know. If you played Sun Moon, um, XY and didn't play Sun Moon, um, imagine absolutely none of the good online stuff is there. And all of it's just hidden behind this horrible, obtrusive crap that it's just... Ugh. Like, everything just takes so much longer. And... I don't know. I, I never used my Wii U online except um, I played the Splatoon Test Fire. I don't play too many local or online multiplayer stuff. Uh, I play Pokemon online, but that's on you know my 3DS. I play Animal Crossing. Um, geez, that's really about it. So I I don't know if I'll be paying for that, and I'm disappointed. It it is cool that they have um, virtual console games on that'll have online multiplayer, but here's the thing. They didn't confirm how Virtual Console works yet, and with them adding new features, what I'm guessing is that you gotta pay again, and that the library is gonna drip feed again. And that's terrible, because you know why? The, so the Switch has like three, four games at launch, but imagine if every game on the Wii U Virtual Console was there day one. You could play Super Mario RPG, you could play Super Metroid. You know, imagine if you ha if you didn't have you know those games on your 3DS, and, but you had them on your Wii U, and now you 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 know have all of those in a portable system and you know as a home console, you know even if they're games you already own with a system like the Switch, that's a really valuable thing to have just because you know you have it portable now, you have it you know on a controller now, you have whatever you want, and that was like that was the whole exciting thing about the Switch for me. But but they just keep mismanaging the VC. I recorded and didn't really publish um, a bit of a rant about the virtual console. And um, I, I figured I may as well just talk about the Switch instead. Oh, Parker, don't pump the mic, please. Um, Parker's being naughty, as always. Um, did you did you do something weird to the volume levels, Parky? No, I think it's okay. Um, where was I? Okay, so the online, not excited, not excited. Um, strange tangent related to online, they actually had this little video explaining the parental controls. Um, it was actually better than their presentation, like, not joking. Um, it's Bowser, you just, you have to watch it if you haven't seen it. It's Bowser and uh, Bowser Jr., and he's using the parental controls for Bowser Jr., and, like, locking him out of games and stuff. It's really great. And I can see Bowser Jr., as being the dad who's like, 
Bowser Jr. is like, oh crap, and then Bowser shouts from like two years in, or from two rooms over, he's like, shut the fuck up in there, don't swear! You know? <laughs> uh, it, it's really great. And um, and they had Bowser with a freaking pimp hat in uh, Mario Odyssey, too. He, he's he's really balling, it's great. Um, Bowser was definitely the highlight of the whole Switch thing in general. Um so, but the the parental controls in gen like they, they seem okay, they seem good, but obviously I'm not gonna use them like on myself. But uh, th that promo or you know that ad for him was really great. Um, what else do they have? So speaking of online pricing, so let's talk about the normal pricing. So the main set is 300 bucks for you get the the console, you get the dock, you get the uh, the controllers. And I don't think you get the dock, the GameCon, like, the controller dock. Parker, what are you doing? Get down. I got mail today. I got, I actually got Hey You Pikachu, the N64 game. And we're probably going to stream that someday. I can't record it yet. Sorry, these, these attacking um, bubble wrap. And anytime I get mail, it smells like new people or new cats, or I don't know what it smells like. But he has to assault the new mail. Um... But yeah, expect Hey You Pikachu at some point. I might have to get a new capture card for it because it, you know, I can't really record N64 with what I currently have. Um, I actually really liked Hey You Pikachu as a kid, so it'll be really interesting to go back and uh, check that out. I know it's got, it's a bit infamous, but uh, I think it's probably a little bit better than you might think if you never played it. But uh, it definitely has, you know, early voice recognition issues. Um, anyway, back to the pricing. So 300 bucks for the main unit. Um, not impressive, but not bad. Um, a lot of rumors were saying 250. I think I was kind of buying into those. That was like a pretty, that was almost like crazy wow factor. Like 200 would be insane. 250 is like, hey, that's, that's pretty nice. That's a portable device right there. That's, you know, was the, was the Vita to the, I think Vita might've been, I don't know. Um, uh oh, hold on. We need to lock my keyboard because Parker is a naughty boy. It's time to play the piano. Um, he he stops my recordings with his butt, and I don't appreciate that, my friend. Um, you keep distracting me. I'm talking about video games. How dare you? Ahem. So, main console, three hundred bucks. Uh, pretty, I guess, pretty expected. You know, they want to be, you know, the cheaper than the... Well, actually, they're not cheaper than the PS3, come to think of it. Um, you know, the slim PS3 is 300 bucks, so... I don't think they want it to be more expensive than the PS4. Um, $300 isn't a bad price. Uh, I don't have any complaints there. Then I saw the accessories, and I thought this was just GameStop making prices up. But apparently, the Pro Controller is $70... The Joy-Con, a pair of Joy-Cons, just the little controller halves, is $80. And the dock is 90 bucks. Like, the dock is... I'm, I think it's, like, pretty much just a glorified TV out and some USB things. And I've, I've, I don't know if it has a fan in it or something to, you know, help overclock it a little bit. But, um... I, I'm kind of guessing that the $90 on the fan, that's mostly because only hardcore people are going to get the thing, so they figure they might as well wring a little bit of profit out of you. The Joy-Cons, I am really surprised. Buying just one Joy-Con, half, half of a controller, is 50 bucks. It's 50 freaking bucks. I don't even know why they let you buy just half of one, because what if you accidentally end up with two left halves? Like, would that work? I don't know. It. I'm a little concerned in terms of... These are freaking expensive. There's a lot of gimmicks going on in them that I wasn't expecting. And they add a lot of complexity that I wasn't expecting. So when I saw that first pitch, I was thinking buttons. Everything works from buttons. So it doesn't matter if you're using the Joy-Con halves. It doesn't matter if they're docked in the little dog controller thing. It doesn't matter if you're using the Pro Controller. They all work the same. And, you know, they're a little bit different ergonomically. Um, sometimes it's portable. Sometimes it's not. But it always is the same game with the same inputs, and everything's great, and that's that was cool. Uh, it turns out I'm somewhat wrong. Not entirely, but it kind of seems like it has that same issue that Wii U did, where, okay, can I play this game only on the gamepad? No, I gotta look at the TV. 
okay, well, I, I only want to look at the TV. Can I avoid the gamepad? Oh, no, there's, there's certain stuff that's only on the gamepad. Uh, can I use my Wiimote on this game? I could use my Wiimote on, on the last game. Why can't I use it on this game? It's just, it's just a bit more complicated than I really think, you know, a good old video game console needs to be. You know, I, I, it's just a bit much. It feels a little... Uh, it's kind of weird for Nintendo to end up being the one where there's so many controller options. Like, the Switch already has more input, like, potential options than the uh, PS4. That has, you know, the, the DualShock 3, it has the Move. I guess it has, uh, you know, technically a fight stick, but, you know, it's basically a rematch DualShock 4. Um, but yeah, I don't know about that. Um, and there's this game called 1-2 Switch... And it's kind of like a Wii... It's the Wii Sports slash Nintendo Land sort of situation. And it uses a lot with the Joy-Con. Like, motion controls, it uses, like... Um, I'm not joking about this. There's some game where you hold the Joy-Con in front of your face and you go, um, 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 um. And you're eating an invisible sub sandwich. It, it looks like something that a robot chicken sketch would make use to make fun of the Wii. Like, circa 2007. Like... Ooh, it looks like it looks like a team that isn't WarioWare trying to make something that they think the WarioWare team could make. Like it's got the WarioWare sort of intent, but not the high quality execution. I've always said that they should just have the WarioWare team make a launch title for their stuff because nobody uses Nintendo's weird hardware per please better than the WarioWare team. They always knock it out of the park. Um, game and Wario a little bit less so, but that wasn't a WarioWare game. Like, it had a little bit different intent, and that was kind of weird. They tried to try to make, like, I think, like, eight or nine medium-sized games instead of all of the micro-games. It was mini-games instead of micro-games, I guess. And I don't think that worked out as well. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll probably get a WarioWare eventually. But, but the, the, the thing is... I figured every game you could play every possible way, and so, you know, you know, you you play your way. Uh, like that that was the whole point of that first Switch thing. But if you want to play this one-two Switch game, no, you, you you can't play with in tablet mode. You gotta play with the Joy-Con halves only, and you gotta do all of this weird stuff. And I don't know. And there's this game where you milk. You don't look. Um, I guess it's interesting. It's kind of like a successor to uh, Jonathan Sebastian Joust, um, which is part of Sports Friends, which is a fun series of games. It's a bunch of really weird local multiplayer games. Um, I think it's on it's on PS4 for sure. I think it's on PS3 and PC as well. Um, but there's this one mode where you have to like knock controllers out of each other's hands, um, and it's not something I would expect Nintendo to really do something like. But like. I have this stuff where, like, you don't look at the, the TV and you, like, uh, you milk a cow and, ooh, that one, I don't know about that one. That one looked, good. and I think the game is $60, like, it, it seems like a pack-in. I wouldn't object to it as a pack-in except for the fact that, the, you know, the controllingness is weird, but uh, 60 bucks. And I think Bomberman's 60 bucks too. There's a lot of stuff that, like, Feels like it should have had a bit of a lower price point. I'm not usually one to complain too much about price point, but everything with this con this console seems really expensive. Um, maybe I was going in with a well, no, it, it is really expensive because I mean, so a Joy-Con half is fifty dollars. Um, I looked on Amazon. You can get the new Xbox One controller with Bluetooth and their weird proprietary you know thing. So two different wireless modes, a headphone jack. And it's only 50 bucks. And that's a pretty good controller. I've got um, I've got the Elite one, actually. So <laughs> look at me talking about expensive controllers. But, um, but yeah, you can buy a $50 like whole game or Xbox One controller. Or you can buy half of a Joy-Con without a grip. And that's also $50. Um, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> Um, it, it makes me not want to buy, like, controllers for everyone. I usually buy a second controller at the very, like, even at launch, I'll buy a second controller, you know, because I'll play stuff with people. 
Um, so it kind of seems to negate the whole thing where every controller is two controllers, but every controller costs twice as much as a one controller, so it doesn't really even out at all. Um, but like even the even the pro controller, you know, no Joy-Con stuff going on there, but it's more expensive, considerably more expensive than you know most um, most places like Amazon will be selling a DualShock Four, the new one, for like around fifty fifty five bucks tops usually. Uh, you know the MSRP is uh, sixty bucks, but you know even that's below seventy. You know it's got amiibo functionality. I can't imagine that adds like twenty dollars of you know stuff to it. But uh, yeah, my my plan was immediately buy a pro controller, um, buy the thing. Maybe if docks are cheap, I'll buy a second dock so I can dock it in my bedroom. Um, I'm just gonna buy the base unit, and nothing else, I guess. So yeah, I really think the controls and stuff are a bit too complicated, a bit too expensive. Um, I'm not saying Nintendo's doomed and stuff, but overall, I got an okay vibe. I was pretty optimistic after the, the very first Switch reveal. I was a little worried about Virtual Console. Um, I would say overall, my opinion on Switch honestly has gone down. Um, I do really like, um, you know... They haven't really shown anything that I would say is a bad game, but the price thing is discouraging. The online thing is really annoying. Um, the control methods, like, it might seem trivial, but for me, it Switch just seemed like it had this clear, like, you know, principle, this ethos to it that you're going to play a freaking video game, my friends. And it doesn't matter if you want to play it like a handheld, or you want to play it like, you know, a console, or you want to play it, you know, you want to pull out the little thingers and use the little, you know, half things. It doesn't matter. It's always going to work the same, because this is the Switch, and it switches. But apparently not quite, because certain games, you know, do a bunch of weird crap. I don't know. And it seems like that with this presentation, it really felt like they're kind of trying to go back to that Wii stuff. And, you know, do the motion stuff and, like, um, what did they say? Um, half, coordinated, um, half Coordinated had a really good tweet about this. Um, they, they were showing all of their fancy motion stuff and how, oh, everybody can play! And it's like, no, not everybody can play. Because, you know, they're, they're using both hands. They're doing all wiggling their hands around, you know, uh, full range of motion stuff. Not everybody can play that. Not everybody has full re use of both arms. Not everybody has both arms. Um, accessibility. Buttons are actually really good for accessibility, as long as you have, like, remappability, um, custom controllers, or, like, the ability to, you know, uh, move parts around and stuff. Like, the Xbox One Elite controller, like, stuff like that can help a lot. Um, like, buttons are surprisingly accessible in terms of, like, physical accessibility. But what they really mean is they want, you know, they want to be the party game thing again. I don't, I don't think, they, they want the Wii people back. I don't think the Wii people are coming back, honey. I don't think, I don't think they're coming back. Um, I don't know. I kind of think they're trying to hedge their bets that if 1-2 Switch really takes off and everybody wants all the weird stuff, they'll make the weird, you know, uh, quote unquote accessible. I don't, I wouldn't really call it accessible it's just and i don't want to call it casual either i i don't know what to call it i'll call it waggle i guess but uh, the, the the thing is the the more classic traditional nintendo games like the mario the zelda they don't seem to include any of that stuff at all that you know it's not like the wii i guess i should be thankful for this i am thankful for this um with the wii you know part of the problem with the wii was that the waggle was in everything, at least early on. Um, you know, you had to waggle to do the sword. You had to waggle to do a roll in Donkey Kong. That was frickin', that was stupid. Um, that is not an input you want to have be a waggle. Um, so they just put it in everything, even when it wasn't appropriate, which sucks. Um, at least with the Switch, it does seem like they're only using that stuff when it is necessary. And, you know... You know, the WarioWare controls stay in the WarioWare-style game. The Zelda game still controls like Zelda. They don't, you know, put stuff where it doesn't belong, which is good. But it just feels like it's kind of this mixed message. And I don't know if they... 
I don't know, it's, it's, it might be intentional, like I was trying to say, it might be intentional so they see, okay, if 1-2 Switch and, um, what was that game, ARMS, if those two sell really well, we'll focus on doing weird stuff for the Joy-Con. If everybody just buys Mario and Zelda, we'll just make, you know, traditional games, I guess you'd call it. I know what to call the, the controller ones, those, that, you know, that's traditional, so to speak, but I don't know how to non derisively refer to the other stuff I don't necessarily think it's bad I just think it complicates things and I don't I don't think it adds the value that I think Nintendo thinks it does cuz like here's the thing somebody's talking on Twitter the other day about how oh, I really appreciate that Nintendo they really focus for the children and you know they design all these games that children can play and you know they just keep it at in their mind it's like here's the thing Kids buy PlayStation 4s. Kids buy, you know, freaking Assassin's Creed. Kids kids just want games. Uh, if anything, kids tend to want more mature, you know, mature in, you know, air quotes sort of games. You know, M-rated games. They want the gore and the yeah. You know, like, uh, when I was a kid, freaking, um, when did GTA 3 came out? That was, that was all the rage. That was, we all had to play that. We all took turns. We put in the cheat codes it was a hell of a lot of fun. You know, a friend got it first, and we were all there for, uh, I think it was a birthday party. It was great. Um, it's amazing the fun you can have with a non-multiplayer game with a ton of friends. As long as it's something you can all do, or, you know, just pass off the controller. Uh, you, sometimes you just gotta make your own fun. Anyway, side, little side thought there. So, but yeah, I don't dislike the fact that Nintendo makes, you know, um approachable non-violent i like you know i do wish people were more receptive in general to cartoony stuff and so on but i don't think you have to design it for kids like i don't think ukulele is designed for kids i don't think it's it's totally okay for kids i don't think it's there's going to be anything offensive in there or anything it doesn't feel like it's designed for kids though i think they just wanted to make a fun cartoony game just because it's for adults doesn't mean there has to be death and gore and violence in it uh, just because it's, you know, cute and happy and fun doesn't mean it has to be for kids. I I think you just want to focus on make something, you know, good. You know, there's there's just, I don't know, I don't, I don't really like the mindset that, you know, oh, you need to target kids. You, you just need to make good games. Like, I, Zelda was like the least kitty thing Nintendo had. And that was like everyone's favorite freaking thing on the N64 when it came out. And, well, OOT was, well, I wouldn't really call it an outlier. It was the best, one of the best Zelda games. But, you know, quality is consistently high. Anyway, I'm getting off track. So, generally, Switch, I don't think it's bad. I'm a little down relative to where I was before. I think it's going to be overall good. I'm not sure if I can really recommend buying it first year. Um... It seems like a holiday present, if anything, at the very, like, earliest. Um, I might I might get it, because, you know, I tend to, you know, I'd be an early adopter because, you know, I make videos for the YouTubes, I, I talk about all this stuff, so I did pre-order it, and Amazon charges frickin' sales tax in my state now. I'm upset. I'm offended. Um, whatever. So I, I might get it at launch, and if I do get it at launch... You can bet your batootie I'll get um, Bomberman. Um, and I guess I might as well get Zelda for it. Because, I mean, it would be weird to buy it at launch and then not get Zelda, I guess. Even though I'm not sure if Zelda's going to be better on Gamepad or not. It's weird. But, um... Yeah. I guess that's all I have to say about Switch for now. Um, I If you followed me on Twitter, I said a lot of words. And... If you didn't unfollow me on Twitter, you probably appreciate and know that I say a lot of words. Um, yeah, I, I see some... There's some bad takes on both sides of the equation in terms of this thing, I think. There's some people that think, you know, oh, this is, you know, it's going to be the best, and, and everybody that doesn't think so is, you know, a stupid, dumb hater. And there's some people like... Uh, apparently some tech... I didn't read articles, so I, I, I shouldn't assume too much. But I heard... That some tech bloggers and stuff are like, oh, this, I wonder how many of these are going to end up on the iPhone before the end of the year. Ha <laughs> ha. It's like, no. 
<laughs> no. Like, did you see Super Mario Run? Like, Nintendo's very clear about, you know, they make mobile games that are intended for mobile. And, you know, they don't, you know, they, they seem to decently appreciate how mobile and uh, traditional games differ. And I did not see anything in that launch lineup that could easily move over to mobile. All right. There are there were some other games I didn't mention. Um, a lot of them have, like, unsure release dates. There's the Fire Emblem Warriors thing, you know, the Musuo thing. Um, I'm not a Fire Emblem fan, so I don't... I'm not sure. I, I probably won't get that. Um, no Metroid, of course. Um, there was some weird RPG, like octolith stories that was like this weird like pixel slash voxel look um that looked interesting and then they panned away from it like after two seconds and um they had this little japanese third party segment in their presentation and every game got like 30 seconds or less it was really confusing and did not sell me on the games at all uh, like i said i did not actually enjoy the presentation um i was kind of glad that i skipped the switch thing for i watched um agdq they had uh mario a thousand a year door um there's a new xenoblade game honestly i think i'm done with monolith soft for now um i really don't like the mmo combat i really can't get into xenoblade x um it's it's just not what i want in an rpg and man that city was terrible i'm getting off topic again but man i played xenoblade x and there's this tutorial and it tells you nothing. It's like over an hour long and it doesn't actually say anything. It's just like giving you the most basic aspects of a lore. Like if it was like a sci-fi TV show, it would be that, you know, the thing where, you know, the, the space drifter, you know, walks into town and they meet the mayor. And, you know, they're like, oh, we're having hard times and stuff. And, you know, within two minutes, they'd be, you know, out the door and, you know, going on space adventures. This thing took like a half hour and like there was no plot progression. I know Parker. That's right. But yeah, I think I'm past that hump, but I just do not enjoy the MMO combat. And I don't enjoy the, the whatever is going on with the music. I'm... Whew, I divorce myself of any of that. And there's the faces. The faces are weird. Monolith Soft has this weird thing where they don't know if they want to be really anime or they want to be really realistic. So what happens is you get a really realistic environment, and then you get really anime people, and it it doesn't tend to work out. It worked out really well in Xenoblade, or Xeno... They have so many Xenos, I'm sorry. Um, Xeno Saga 3 looks fantastic. What a great game. Um, this is such a shame. The first, you know, the series is a little bit impenetrable, I'll admit. But um, Xenoblade 3 is just great. It looks great. It plays great. Um... There's a lot of complicated plot threads. It, it, it was a really good game. And um, Xenoblade 1 on Wii, I think that looks pretty good. Um, especially for a Wii game. You know, great, great environments. The character models, they're not bad. You know, it's like good PlayStation 2 stuff, which is what you expect out of the Wii, really. You know, maybe maybe a little bit above. Because, you know, the GameCube, it's basically GameCube stuff, and GameCube is a bit better than, game, than PS2. Um... Xenoblade X has those really weird faces. And then this Xenoblade 2, the characters are really anime. Like, they look like some of the more cell shady sort of uh, Tails characters, which isn't bad. But then they're in this totally realistic environment. It's like, what are you doing there? It looks like freaking Who Framed Roger Rabbit, which is also what the Mario game looks like. It's just this dissonance that... Uh, it's not a complete deal breaker, but it just looks... Why did you do that? You could have done... You could have done almost anything else. Anyway, I think that's about all I got to say. Which is a lot of things. But yeah. So, Switch... Ah. I'm not going to avoid it. But, um... It's definitely the sort of thing I would say, wait. Uh, and the sad thing is... If all they need is the virtual console, the virtual console is the key to everything, in my opinion. All they freaking had to do was follow the damn trip. No, all they had to do was have all the virtual console games from 3DS and Wii U. You know, I'll even let them. I'll even let the Wii stuff slide. The Wii is the one time the virtual console was almost handled right, 
I'll let that slide. I'll, I'll ignore it. Just bring all of the Wii U ones. Bring Pokemon Snap. Bring Super Mario RPG. Super Metroid. Put all of that on Switch. Day one. And even without new Switch exclusive games, you have so much to play. You can play it how you want to. You got new controllers. You can play it, you know... You can play it in your freaking rooftop ball. You can play it on an airplane and all of those asinine locations in the original Switch trailer. Um, you know, that playing old games on a new system is pretty great. I did that on my Vita. Um, I really loved playing um, Mega Man Legends on that, Castlevania, uh, Symphony of the Night. You, you know, I, I, like, I like things that have games on them. Like, I think, oh yeah, this is, this was a topic I wanted to bring up in a different thing that I ended up, I recorded and then I didn't think it was really worth posting yet, but games need, or consoles need to just start keeping their libraries again, um, and virtual console is just such a perfect thing, because I mean, it's emulated, so you know, they largely just have to port the emulator less so than the individual games. So they port over the emulator to Switch, and they release everything that they already have day one. And they just have this idea that they need to do the drip feed. And, you know, they almost give it triple A, you know, release cycle for, you know, 20-year-old games. And that's just asinine. Like, imagine if goodoldgames.com, imagine if instead of, so like, last year they released a bunch of Sierra, um adventure games imagine if instead of on one day they released like complete collections of like a whole bunch of different series like i forget exactly how many games it must have been like 30 games all at once imagine if instead of that you got one game every month so you know today we get uh you get king's quest one next month we're gonna get king's quest two then we're gonna get king's quest three uh, in a few more months after that, we'll start with Quest for Glory 1, and then Quest for Glory 2, and then a couple years down the line, if you wanted Police Quest, now we're finally going to release Police Quest. It's like, no, you can't do that! Uh, especially considering they have, their release schedule is so slow, they never finish their backlog. That's, that's a whole problem in and of itself. They're never gonna finish like the Wii U like doesn't have all of the games that could possibly have on it It doesn't have all the games from the Wii on it and they're already doing a new console And so when there's the switch 2 and it doesn't share the virtual console library again, we start the whole song and dance over again and It's like the the virtual console is just ugh, It's so frustrating because it could be amazing, but they just have this stupid drip feed crap and Oh man, it's it's frustrating. N Nintendo is a is a company that I think no matter how you know devoted you are, you have to acknowledge they can be really freaking frustrating and really thick headed. You know, it's easy to convince yourself that they're doing the right thing, but uh, in my opinion, a lot of the times they're just doing things because it's safe, or it's easy, or it's because you know it's what they did in the past, and. Particularly with the virtual console, I think they're really screwing up. Because the virtual console should completely stomp the frickin' NES Mini. Uh, I heard it has really bad input lag. I don't have one myself. I, I think I said this before, but I don't, I don't see much value in that. I see why people like it, because it's simple. It's so, you, you buy 30 NES games, you play them all in one thing. There you go. It's simple. It's got a lot of, it's got a decent amount of value. It's not a lot, but you know. It's so much simpler than the Virtual Console. And the Virtual Console should be completely way, way, way better than the NES Mini. But it's not, because you don't know what you're getting. You don't know when you're gonna get it, and you don't know if you're gonna have it when the next thing comes out. With the NES Mini, you don't have to worry about any of that crap. You just go play Contra, you play Mega Man. That's what Virtual Console should be like. If I bought all of the Mega Man games on Wii, I should just have those. Like, that's how Steam is. That is that is my guess for how the next PlayStation console is going to be. I'm guessing that both Xbox 2 and PlayStation 5 are going to be x86. And they're going to have 100% backwards compatibility for this generation. And, you know, then you'll be able to, you know, 
buy your buy you know last gen's games on your new thing or play your old games and that's great and virtual console of all things should be even easier because i mean you know it's an emulator and you know who who better to emulate nintendo's games than nintendo and yeah anyway this i did not mean this for this to be 40 minutes um <laughs> If anyone's still watching, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy my high-quality opinions on the Nintendo Switch DM copyright symbol. Um, I'll probably, whenever I get a Switch, I'll, I'll probably, you know, post some impressions as well. That's right, Parker. For now, I guess I am expecting it on launch day. Um, I just wanted to be sure to get a thing in because I was worried they were going to pull an NES Mini. And uh, a lot of the sales, the things have been selling out, so maybe I made the right choice, but um, I'm not really one to mind too much if a launch is a little sparse, because, you know, when I buy a console, I'm buying something for five years. I'm not buying it for five minutes. Uh, I think that's how you always have to approach a console. If you need the $300 worth of value right now, do not buy a console at launch. Do not buy the best like launch lineup console ever what even had the best launch lineup like like i think a lot of people would say the any the n64 had a great launch but it literally had two games one of them was super mario 64 so that's you know that's a great one but it's one game <laughs> like yeah i think backwards compatibility is really the only way you get a good day one library and well like i said no VC, no library. Womp womp. But yeah, I, I already mentioned that, so whatever. This, I, I'm so out of practice with doing these podcasts. Why? Sob. Anyway, thanks for watching.